great creative uh, experience <laughs> working on the Beatles eight days a week, uh, which Nigel produced, and he, he was the one that, uh, that invited me into that process as a director. Uh, we worked with a great team, and I found it very creatively uh, satisfying. Um, I was a Beatles fan, but not encyclopedic, not with a deep knowledge. <clears throat> but um, we started looking for other subjects, and uh, Nigel suggested Pavarotti. And I thought, well, that's very interesting because Pavarotti is a, is a, is a household name around the world, uh, and yet <clears throat> people don't know as much. There are many, many people who might not understand uh, that much about his music and may not know the details of his life. And as I began to read and understand the, the, you know, what his life's journey was, I found it uh, fascinating, surprisingly relatable. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and I also began to see that as somebody who doesn't know that much about uh, opera or didn't be going into the to the project, that the um, that his life was kind of operatic, and that much of his life it could be understood through the arias, particularly when performed at certain points in his life where he, he was going through something that thematically was uh, similar. And as a film director working with actors, I could see in certain performances that were you know, recorded for television. Uh, all around the world, that <clears throat> there was that, that there were times when he was he was singing and he was it was going beyond a performance. I just believed there was a kind of an emotional connection. The way I would believe a great actor or actress is really connecting with an emotional moment in a, in a film that I'm directing them in. And so we started to build the movie around those arias. Those possibilities all made a lot of sense. And then <clears throat> I think the most important. Um, um, Thing was, after having some conversations, we realized that um, that the the, the, the family um, they they were willing to not only cooperate but to be interviewed, something that they'd been reluctant to do before, um, and uh, you know without creative controls or anything like that, they were they were willing to trust the process uh, and and really share the truth. Um, his, his, you know, his family, his second wife, Nicoletta, they, they brought so much uh, to, to, to the film of themselves and then also access uh, and credibility for us going out, trying to get interviews, but also great footage, uh, footage that had never been seen before, private videos where he's very, very honest. Uh, not everything is flattering or complimentary, but these are moments where he's not promoting a, a, a concert or, or, or talking about you know, a, a, a philanthropic endeavor that he's engaged in. This is just about his life. And so <clears throat> I just felt like we could give a very balanced and interesting um, look at his life. And I thought it was a life very much worthy of celebrating. Um, thank you, Ron. When we, we first started, talking about this with Deca Records, his, his label. Um, I did a little research on YouTube and saw that 100 million people had watched videos of Ness and Dormer. That's a staggering number of people. And I would ask folks in restaurants, waiters and people, do you know who Pavarotti is? And I either get, yes, Ness and Dormer, or the great opera singer, or yes, I know who he is. And I realized that his name is synonymous with opera in the way that you know, Pelé is synonymous with soccer and Muhammad Ali is synonymous with boxing and Eric the Center with motor racing. He was one of those people whose one name immediately tells you something. But as Ron said, people had a superficial knowledge of other than opera, oh, really classical it. music specialists, but not a detailed knowledge. And that there was just so much to mine in his story as we did the research. And he was this fascinating man with this massive charisma rose above even his own great work. And as Ron said, when we knew that uh, uh, we'd have the support of both families, Nicolato Mantovani was here and Giuliano Pavarotti, um, and we got all this treasure trove of intimate materials, it, it, we just knew it would be a great story. Allora, c'è una domanda qui davanti e poi lì e arriviamo. 
Buongiorno, sono Emanuela Castellini, Carrierai Quotidiani del Nord, intanto complimenti. Allora, eh, credo che il materiale sia stato talmente tanto perché Nicoletta Mantovani, insomma la famiglia, la fondazione difende molto eh, l'operato del maestro, è stato arrivare poi, eh, diciamo che era il temore del popolo, per cui è riuscito a fare anche nel nostro paese, che siamo un paese di melomani, a far arrivare questo tipo di musica. Per cui quanto è stato difficile eh, con tutto il materiale che ha avuto mettere su questo gioiellino e poi dopo tutto quello che ha sentito, che ha visto, i dialoghi, che idea che si è fatta del maestro, cioè eh, la caratteristica principale oltre alla sua grande voce di Luciano Pavarotti. Grazie. Uh, well, <coughs> thank you, I'm glad you, I'm glad you liked the film. Uh, the, of course, I wasn't the, the only one looking at footage, and there was Nigel, there's a, there was a team of editors that spent, you know, a good year just sifting and organizing and building out uh, options. Um, as, I, as I think I mentioned, <coughs> I began, as I began to understand the, the arias, because I, I was fascinated by the man, I read, read about him, I, you know, I, 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 I could connect with him. We're, we're not similar. In fact, I, I envy, I envy him and his, um, his approach to life, and I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, because it's very different than mine, and I, and I, 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 I found his approach to life remarkable. But <clears throat> as a storyteller, when I began to see that, that um, I understand opera and understand the power of the stories that he was telling through song, um, I began to really connect with the movie as, as cinema. And I thought, well, we, we can actually let the Arias help tell his, his story, again, as I said, by selecting performance <coughs> moments that align with, uh, with, with moments in his, in his personal life. And to me, that was the, that was the power of this story, was to, to understand that he was on a life's journey. And it wasn't a simple one, it was a complicated one. That there were echoes from his childhood experiences that, uh, and drama from his childhood and the circumstances of his life that influenced you know, him for, you know, for all his days uh, in ways that were sometimes very positive, sometimes uh, uh, challenging, um, and, uh, um, and, and so, uh, those were the moments that we were looking for, whether it was in the interviews, whether it was in the archival footage, whether it was in the performances, um, or the home movies. Uh, it were those moments that would reveal this combination of him as, a, as an artistic genius uh, uh, of the highest order uh, and uh, a very unique, memorable um, individual. And, and um, so, from a storytelling standpoint, that's that's uh, you know that's what we that's what we sifted it down and, and we and we built around. Um, also, these again, I can't say we had so many wonderful interviews, um, and uh, but the, you know the family story is the one that we can all relate to the most because we all come from families and we all understand the complexities of these. And I think the I think the interviews are courageous uh, and do a great service not to, only to the memory of Pavarotti, but also to our understanding of ourselves and, um, and, and uh, you know, the, 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 way, the way any of us navigate the world uh, as it unfolds. Um, you asked, lastly, uh, you know, what, what, what my sort of takeaway uh, was about him. Well, <clears throat> I mentioned that I, what I admired the most is this, um, and I think it was influenced by the fact that he, had uh, nearly died as a child, and he talks about it in one of the interviews that we used, that he decided he was just going to live life, that he was going to um, view uh, every day as, a, as, a, as, an op as an opportunity that he might have missed. And, you know, and uh, when his, his, you know, when there was illness in his families, among his loved ones, he would always hope for that for them, to understand that now it's a new day, um, get through this, and then, and then live as fully as you, as you can. But, but through all of it is this balance, right? Because it's always in equilibrium. I love his joy. I love the way he reached out and grabbed life. But you can see the regret in his own eyes that sometimes his, that abandonment and even recklessness hurt people. And 
and he's aware of that. And, um, and that's also very human and very relatable. Uh, so uh, that was my takeaway, is that it was, uh, you know, it's, he lived a complicated, um, adventuresome life. We all benefited from that spirit that could provide that art. Okay. Qui Francesco Carlo, Agenzia Anza. Io ho due domande. Una, una cosa che si nota molto nel, nel film è il sorriso di Pavarotti. A un certo punto se ne parla anche. Cioè, è un uomo che sorride sempre. È, è incredibile. E volevo capire, cioè, pensare, sapere cosa pensa di questo atteggiamento verso la vita di Pavarotti, un po' ne ha già parlato. Altra cosa che trovavo interessante è il fatto dell'italianità di Pavarotti. Cioè lui è forse l'uomo più famoso del, del, degli inizi secolo, di fine secolo ed ha tutte le caratteristiche dell'italiano almeno come ci vedono un po' all'estero. Allora volevo sapere se quanto l'italianità di Pavarotti è diventata un, un, un affascinante per il mondo. Grazie. Um, in, in terms of his Italianness, I was thinking as you were asking the question, what really jumped out for us was that his determination to keep to what he himself described as his peasant roots. And that meant thinking about Barna, thinking about the food from that area of Italy, and trying to recreate um, both in the way that he dealt with people, a social intimacy, as he became more and more famous and as he traveled the world. And as it became possible for him, as we learned from his, the people, we interviewed 53 people in this film, um, the way that he took actually his kitchen on the road with him and he would somehow try to both cook for people as a sign of intimate relationship and friendship and seek to have foods from a wonderful part of, I guess it's called the Emiliano region of Italy. So that, I would say, was a feature of his Italianness. As for the rest of it, I think that's for Italians to judge. You? Well, the, what, I, um, what I found, we talk about the smile, he was an incredibly charismatic uh, person. And I think he, he was not only a, a brilliant, a, you know, genius level uh, artist, but he was also a fantastic uh, ambassador uh, for, for opera. Um, and, uh, you know, his, his, one of his agendas, maybe his primary agenda, was to take opera to the masses. He talked about it openly, and he did it. Um, traveling the world, playing in places that no one had ever played before, um, of, of finding ways to, you know, to collaborate with pop stars and so forth to try to bring the opera to, to more and more ears. And, uh, and, and I, I, I hope, in all honesty, and with great modesty, that our film just does a little bit to extend uh, that mission. And I tried to make a movie that, um, that uh, non-opera lovers would find engaging, would connect with, and discover, perhaps discover, the power of this, uh, this great art form. The last thing that I would say about him that I, that I admire, and I've seen in a, in, a, in a number of people that I've worked with over the years, but not that many, because it's a rare quality among superstars, and that is uh, an honest, sustained humility. It doesn't mean that he didn't have confidence in, in what he could do and what he had contributed. It wasn't, it wasn't that he wasn't proud of it, but it is that connection to his roots and the sense that he is who he, he was who he was and, um, and, and he was grateful for where, what he had achieved and, and uh, he thought it was from God, he knew it was from the support of those around him as well and that these were all gifts given to him that he, he tried to maximize and make the most of with great uh, humility and hard work. Pronto? Ecco. Eh, volevo, uno dei pregi del documentario credo che sia eh, non cercare di svelare completamente Pavarotti ma di presentarci un uomo che continua ad avere un certo mistero cioè lei non, non dice io lo conosco lei non dice eh, è così lei dice forse ci sono anche queste cose nella vita di Pavarotti e questo secondo me è un grandissimo pregio perché lascia 
a Pavarotti il suo mistero, il suo, il suo fascino. Ecco, le chiedo, eh, però allo stesso tempo le mette in, in luce il melodramma della vita. È stato, qual è la, stata la cosa più difficile per lei per realizzare questo film su Pavarotti? Grazie. Are you sure the same answer with a good more start? Yeah, okay. Um, I think that, first of all, we interviewed, as I mentioned, 53 people. It was apparent that they were all giving their best in the interviews. And we're very, there's something about Luciano that made people feel, to be frank about him and to say what his, as we all have, challenges were. Um, and their sense of the power of his personality and his, um, talent and, and big heart seemed to, to exude. You interview that many people, it's like doing an opinion poll. You, <laughs> you can't cover it up. So the person that Ron was saying a minute that he put in this film was the person we met through those people. I don't think there's anybody on the planet other than one or two people who are in, in firm that had something to say that we didn't interview. And, you know, we're very, very famous people who um, are very accessible. They still have a place that is theirs inside. And I've noticed that over the years working with stars. And I think with Luciano, the person that you meet on the film, I've been told by his family and other people, he is that person. And a couple of his closest friends in New York that we interviewed, who are opera experts, who watched the film to look for us anything that we might have got a little bit wrong on opera. They said, you know, you've captured our friend and you've captured the artist. And for us, that was the highest compliment. So, what, whatever, if you knew him personally, you would have discovered it. It feels to us like we got close to that in the film. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's a little bit he kept for himself. Sure. And I, you know, I would just say that, that uh, um, you know, I think with a documentary, as a, as a filmmaker, you can come closer to trying to more directly express what you think someone was like or what their life may have meant. Um, in, a, in, a, in a scripted version, um, you know, you, you, you surmise more in order to create these scenes. With a documentary, you have to go with the footage that you have and, and what you learn from the, uh, uh, from the interviews, particularly in a film like this, that isn't narrated. This is not my, explain, you know, me or somebody else, some other narrator, explaining everything about, about the channel. So yes, there, there remains an air of mystery. It's still... Um, you know, it's, it's an interpretation uh, and an expression of uh, what I and our team feel we, we learned and we, can, uh, and we can share. What was the toughest thing? Um, narrowing it into, uh, you know, one, the length of one film. I mean, uh, what a life. Uh, you know, if you, we all probably know, but I, mean, I just tell people, you know, start reading and listening because there's a, there's, a, there's a lot more to understand and learn about this, uh, this, this great artist and this, this remarkable uh, uh, individual. So it was trying to make the choices that we thought were, were most relevant. Again, <coughs> trying to respect people who really knew something of, 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 of Luciano uh, and, and opera and to also um, simultaneously inform and hopefully excite um, people who, who didn't. Um, their curiosity and, uh, and uh, hopefully a new sort of understanding and exploration of this sort of remarkable art form. Um, Can I just add one more thing? The other thing that was very hard was how to weave the music into the film because in, in a narrative documentary you're trying to have a storyline and keep the flow of the story. But if it's popular music like the Beatles, you can go in and out of a song and you probably know the song so we can bring the song down and somebody can talk. In an aria, if you don't play a sufficient amount of the music, people won't understand it, especially if they're not familiar. And we were very blessed by a partner of ours, Paul Crowder, who may be the best music editor in the world, who cut the Beatles and many other films. He, he was the editor that worked with Ron on weaving this music into the film so that um, hopefully it feels seamless. Thank you. Eh, io volevo fare una domanda appunto a Mr. Howard, cioè volevo chiedergli, lui nel suo percorso professionale è sempre stato appunto molto eclettico, ci ha abituato a grandi cambi, insomma grandi novità. 
che, cosa, che fase è questa nella sua vita professionale che lo sceglie appunto a fare un film come questo? Adesso che cosa sta cercando proprio nel suo lavoro, nella sua professione? Ok, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, have, I have been eclectic, you know, I, I was a child actor working in television and in movies from the time I was four years old. Um, by the time I was 14 or 15, I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker and a director. And by the time I was actually directing, around in my early 20s, 22, 23, um, and I, I began to succeed well enough that I knew I was going to have a career, the one thing that I didn't want was to be too narrow in my approach. I didn't want to be a brand that did thrillers or comedies or one kind of film or the other. I, I, I wanted to, to make it a life's work and a kind of an exploration. Um, you know, my, my formal education is a modest one. So my, these life experiences that I have, they, they mean the world to me and, and they provide a kind of constant growth. So I think sort of creative growth is, um, is, 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 is what I'm always looking for. And uh, in, in the past five years, it's led me into the documentary space. Uh, and I've been incredibly gratified by it and stimulated by it, and sometimes kind of humbled by it, because the people who fully dedicate themselves to, to, uh, to this work, you mentioned Paul Crowder, but you know, Mark Monroe, and others like, you know, the, the, um, the it, it, it's a group of people that I really admire. I'm, it is providing a kind of a, of a, of a growth, and the late, great Jonathan Demme was a friend of mine who encouraged me to finally take the leap. He moved back and forth between documentaries and scripted content all the time. He said, it's going it, to, it's going to not only enrich your life, Ron, but you're going to, it's going to inform your work doing scripted um, material as well. Uh, and, uh, and it really has. Now, <clears throat> coinciding with this, through, due to technology and all of the, the, the this, 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 uh, uh, you know, exponential growth of various platforms. Um, it, the filmmaking is become, becoming less and less formulaic. Things are blending together in really exciting ways. Cultures and aesthetics are, 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 are discovering uh, each other and informing each other's work in ways that is, you know, ever more exciting. And I'm really grateful at this point in my life to have the experience I have behind me but also the energy, the excitement, a company, Imagine Entertainment, an opportunity to collaborate on, on uh, more and more projects. And so that's what I'm doing. My children are raised. Um, I have time. I have no hobbies. All I want to do is be with my family and work. Those are the only two things. And, I, and as a result, I'm doing as many interesting projects as I possibly can, either as a director or as a producer or as a partner in Imagine Entertainment. Buongiorno Maurizio Misino di Movie Player. Eh, io sono da anni un grande fan degli U2 e di Bono e eh, mi è piaciuto molto ovviamente il momento del film in cui compare lui e anche molto divertente quello che racconta. Volevo sapere un po' come è andato l'incontro con lui e cosa ci può raccontare oltre a quello che vediamo nel film. Grazie mille. Well, 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 uh, first of all, I'd say Bono's contribution is remarkable and it's a real uh, testament to uh, his love of the maestro and what and what uh, Luciano and their and their friendship has you know has meant to him and I think the ways in which it inspired him uh, I I wasn't a part of that interview Nigel has known Bono for years and conducted that interview with him and it was a remarkable it was I think it was a gift to the memory of Luciano and certainly to our uh, our film and because I had a little objectivity and distance I also thought it was fascinating because I thought it was it was it was revealing for him. Uh, and in, in the ways in which he related to Luciano's journey, but you should talk about the interview. The, the, the interview was, you knew when it was happening that he was totally on. He was very hard to schedule, and, and Nicoletta Mantovani stoically, um, I was going to say, pursued him in a positive way for almost a year, went to concerts, and, and, they, and he sang a duet with 
he, sang, he sang Miss Sarajevo at a show I went to in New York and, and, and but he's got to do this interview. And it was almost... Well, by the way, we tried very hard to get him to do the Beatles and he was very flattering about it. He says, you know, I love, the, I love the Beatles, I'd love to talk about them, but we could just never ever schedule them. So I was very impressed when he... Uh, well, I say all, all kudos to Nico, who I have to say was a tower of strength on the production side of this. Um, so we got him there and he was on tour and at first it took him a while to warm up and then you could see his eyes light up as he sort of remembered his friend. And um, that piece at the end of the film when he talks about him getting a little older and how he feels about it, um, how he feels about his voice maturing with age, and you sort of had the sense that Bonner was thinking about himself as he was talking, what it means to be a singer and to be in your 50s, 60s or 70s and, and still working. And, I, I thought it was a testimony for the ages, actually, for, for all artists, as, as, as they mature. I also thought, I mean, just the, having that footage and the sequence and the audacity of Luciano just showing up with a camera and Bono remembering it, but it also says so much about Luciano because, again, it's this boldness, it's this willingness to just try to make things uh, happen that, um, again, as the, it demonstrates a, 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 a kind of, uh, a kind of a courage uh, and an excitement and a, and a, 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 a daring. Uh, it reminded me also, when we talk about Bono talking about how critics, you know, would, would, would complain about him performing in later and they, didn't, and they, they, they did not understand. <clears throat> Another thing that meant a lot to me in, in um, some of the home movies that Nicoletta allowed us to have, uh, where um, he's, he's talking about his life, and he talks about how he was criticized. And then you, you recognize that he, he would be in situations where he was collaborating with pop stars, and, and you know, the, 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 the critics who were in some ways were sort of his bread and butter, he relied upon them. The, the mainstream uh, classical music world to support him, and they were they they were very disgruntled by that, and yet he carried on. He carried on knowing that that he would be criticized, knowing that that hurt. He didn't like that. It's not that he just sloughed it off. It pained him. You could see it in his face, and yet he did it knowing he would be criticized because he felt it was the right thing. It was the right thing for opera. It was the right thing for the. The, 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 the organization he was trying to get fundraising for, um, and, uh, and it was what he wanted to do creatively with his life. So there's real integrity and honesty in that that I always admire. Valerio Cappelli, Corriere della Sera. Volevo, dunque, questo è un ritratto di Luciano Pavarotti attraverso le persone che l'hanno conosciuto e e amato, tra le tante testimonianze al di là della simpatia dell'umanità di Nicoletta che saluto eh, eh, si crea a un certo punto un cortocircuito drammaturgicamente sul piano drammaturgico quando parla eh, la prima moglie che esprime quasi ancora del risentimento nei confronti di Luciano no? cioè la sua immagine dice sarebbe cambiata dopo quello che è successo, cosa che non è avvenuta, ma dice anche siamo andati avanti all'inizio con i miei soldi, nella nostra vita poi mia, eccetera. Ecco, volevo sapere invece che l'incontro con Abba, come è andato, se è stato difficile accettare eh, diciamo, la sua testimonianza. Non accettare, scusi, se è stato difficile convincere a parlare. Well, uh, I was not a part of that interview, I don't speak Italian and I think I was filming something at that point. Um, so I, I, but, um, but I, this is again why I use the word courage as it relates to those who were interviewed and I thank them for, their, for the honesty as well. Um, and and I, I think within those interviews is a kind of a case study in f forgiveness, if you look at the arc of the interviews, without necessarily forgetting, without being oblivious to the hurt. And there, I, I, again, that's why I, I, I view those as sort of um, some of the most valuable um, lessons and components uh, in, in the story that we can share with audiences. Um, but I was not there for those interviews. Nigel can speak to that. I, I actually think 
Ron, you said it perfectly. The, the, uh, in, that, in families, these things happen. And in fact, uh, uh, the wonderful Adua says that specifically in the film. She talks about going to see him in the end of his life. Um, so these things happen in families, and it would be dishonest that, that both families wanted to be frank and honest. And the truth is there, and, and there was, um, you know, at the end of his life, everybody came together. And for me, that was, that I, 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 when we saw the first cut of the film, I, I cried in that scene. And, 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 and frankly, bless the families, we're represented here with Julian and Nico, and we were so lucky. We, we went to, when we were doing the interviews with Ador, Juliana, Christina, and Lorenzo, um, after the Verona 10th anniversary event, which, which Nico produced, which was fantastic, um, they, they said, let us show you something. And the three sisters led me and Paul Crowder, our other producer, Jeannie Festa, uh, to a room in their house. And it was a storage room. It was about 20 feet deep, 10 feet wide, and had four rows of fine. And every drawer contained black and white, and, and I don't know if you remember this, but in colored photographs. And it was, wow. And they said, well, you could use any of these. Now, normally, families don't let you do that. I've been through this quite a lot. Um, and, and, and I think the open-heartedness and sometimes painful-heartedness of everybody involved in, in the extended Pavarotti family is just part of what was brought into this film, and I know it was very important to Ron. Uh, questa era l'ultima domanda. Thank you very much. Thank you.